Dr. Dave Seftel reporting for Macular News. We're here today with uh, Professor Dennis Clegg from the University of California, Santa Barbara. Welcome. Thank you very much. Tell us a little bit about your laboratory and its key, key focus. Sure. Um, I'm the co-director of the Center for Stem Cell Biology and Engineering at UC Santa Barbara. Uh, Santa Barbara doesn't have a medical school, but we do a lot of basic research and bioengineering research that ultimately leads to treatments for various diseases. Tell us about the presentation that you made at the AMD conference. Yes. Uh, I gave a, a presentation on our, our work on part of what's called the California Project to Cure Blindness, which is a, uh, an effort funded by the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine, our state-funded stem cell program in California, to develop a stem cell-based therapy for the dry form of macular degeneration. And what we've been able to do is to take an embryonic stem cell and turn it into the retinal pigmented epithelium, which is the cell type that's missing in dry AMD. And our approach is to grow a monolayer of the cells on a little three by six millimeter uh, polymer. And it, the idea is that would be implanted in the back of the eye to replace RP cells that are dying as the disease progresses. I mean, imagine a little contact lens-like material, three by six millimeters, but instead of putting it on the surface of the eye, the surgeons would implant it in the back of the eye in the subretinal space to provide support for the photoreceptors and keep them alive. At what stage are you in the current process? So we're, we're working towards applying for a phase one clinical trial. We're hoping to file what's called an investigational new drug application with the FDA uh, before the end of 2014. And we hope to uh, initiate a clinical trial, phase one safety trial, uh, in 2015. Where are you deriving these particular cell line from? So we start with, uh, with the H9 cell line, which was actually one of the first uh, embryonic stem cell lines derived in Wisconsin back in 1998. And the beauty of these cells is that uh, from that one donated five-day-old blastocyst, we can make millions and millions and millions of cells. And as far as we can tell, they grow forever. So we can grow them, freeze them down, thaw them out, make more. And hopefully, if, if our therapy is successful, from that one donated blastocyst, we can treat everyone in the world with dry macular degeneration. Initial concerns regarding rejection, uh, is that something you're going to be looking at? Yeah, that's, that's uh, a concern if, if uh, you know, it's a transplant, it's like a heart transplant. So um, we're proposing to the FDA to use immunosuppression in the patients, but then just for a short period of time and then taper that down and, uh, and we hope that uh, the cells will survive and, and, and uh, you know, show uh, improvement in the patients. Uh, the subretinal space is, at least on paper, immune privileged. And uh, in patients, we just don't know what to expect yet. But the beauty of working in the eye is that if there is a problem with inflammation or infiltration of immune cells, they can see that and, and we can uh, then treat appropriately. There was a concern in initial studies that were done in, for example, spinal cord uh, neuroma formation. Is that something that you appreciate in the eye? That's a big worry of the FDA. You know, these cells, if left in an undifferentiated state, could grow and form some kind of mass or tumor. So our approach has been to make sure that they're completely differentiated into the RPE cells. And we've done a, a whole battery of assays to look at whether or not there are any cells left that could grow out of control, and we don't see that. Um, and the FDA requires, before going into a human trial, that we test these cells very extensively in animal models to make sure that they can't form tumors. And we haven't seen any sign of tumor formation in all of our preclinical studies. So what is the timeline then for your study? Well, it, it, uh, it will depend on, you know, if we get approval right away to go forward into a clinical trial. We hope we will. And so we would initiate a, a trial in 2015 that would be a phase one study with 
uh, probably 20 uh, patients, uh, probably with uh, the more advanced form of dry AMD. And the first, you know, approach is to show that it's safe. And, and so it, to be completely upfront, uh, those patients probably won't see much benefit because they've already lost their photoreceptors. We're not providing photoreceptors. We're providing the RP that support the photoreceptors. So what we would hope is that that would halt the progression of the disease in those patients. Um, but again, we're not providing the photoreceptors. If it's safe, then the idea is to go in at an earlier stage and preserve the photoreceptors and their function. What about patient recruitment? <clears throat> The, the trial will go on at the USCI Institute. That's the clinical end of our team, and, and our team is led by uh, Mark Humayan, who's an MD, PhD, retinal surgeon at USC. And we haven't started recruiting yet, but we will list it on clinicaltrials.gov and work from the patients that are seen at USC to begin with. It's a one-site uh, phase one clinical trial. Uh, in addition to this study, are you working on any other particular avenues using the technology and techniques that you've developed? Well, yes, there's a, a second study that I'm part of that's funded by the Foundation Fighting Blindness, where the idea is to combine photoreceptors and RP cells, and this time start with an induced pluripotent stem cell that could be matched to the patient. If there is an issue with, with immune rejection, which we don't know yet, we might want to start with those cells. And we're working with uh, David Gam, who's uh, a retinal specialist at the University of Wisconsin, and uh, Jamie Thompson, who is the father of stem cell biology, who was the first to isolate embryonic stem cells at the University of Wisconsin. That one's a little further out. It's just beginning. Uh, the idea, though, again, would be to have a little monolayer of RPE, combine it with a layer of photoreceptors, and that would help patients that have lost both cell types. So you're covering both the bases? Well, we hope, and, I, and that's, that one, as I said, is just getting started and, and is still a few years away from a clinical trial, but we're hopeful that someday we can translate this to help patients. So what is your message to patients in terms of a timeline? You know, that's everybody asks um, about timelines, and everybody's impatient and wants to see therapies, and, and we do too. And, you know, I guess one message I would have is that the patients are really our motivation. You know, we see how difficult the situation is uh, in, in, you know, young people with inherited retinal disease, uh, older people that are getting age-related macular degeneration, so common now. And one of my students wrote an essay re recently for the International Society for Stem Cell Research. And she said that the patients are, are really our jet fuel to keep us going. And, and we're working as fast as we can and want to press forward. The FDA is also very supportive, and they want to see therapies developed. Well, thank you for your extraordinary work keeping California first and helping to lead the nation and perhaps the world in a revolution in eye disease treatment. Thank you very much.